Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. And the other day, I don't know how or why it popped into my head, but I started to think about the DCM time window. It was a speaker. And uh, I was not yet in the audio business. Uh, this was like, I'm thinking 1976 or 1977. I, I met Andy Singer and started working for him in 78. So it's before that. And I had this fascination with this speaker called the DCM Time Window. DCM was the name of the company. They're, they're still around. But anyway, there was this magazine called The Audio Critic. And the main writer for The Audio Critic was a guy named Peter Axel. And he wrote these raves. He was constantly referring to the DCM Time Window. I think it was $660 or something. So it was, in those days, that was expensive, but still definitely attainable. So I was, I, I just lusted after the speaker. I wanted it so bad because the way Peter Axel described it, it just sounded so perfect. It was time aligned. The sound was very coherent. It was a wedge shaped, shaped speaker, a tall skinny speaker like this with a tweeter and a woofer on each side. So four drivers, but faced off at an angle. And that, uh, so they created a big image and it was supposed to be very focused and time aligned and all the good stuff that we want audiophile speakers to be. So I kept reading that review and imagining what it would be like to live with this speaker, this incredible, you know, very advanced technology speaker for 1976 or whatever it was, right? There were no dealers in New York City, none that I could find. Remember, this is the pre-internet age, right? So the only dealer that I knew of was way out on Long Island. I had to take, I don't drive, so I had to take the Long Island Railroad out to this dealer. I wish I could remember the name of the store. It was a big big, you know, high-end store. I don't think it exists anymore. And I slept out there. I called. I made an appointment, which is something I always urged when I became a salesman. I urged my customers to do just you're more likely to get what you want if you make an appointment at a high-end store than just walk in and say, I want this. So you know, I called in advance. I said, I'm interested in the time windows, da da da, da. So I, you know, got the, the sales, my salesman's name, you know, Jack or something. So I schlep on the train. I go out there with an armful of records that I knew really well to play. I go into the store, I say hello to Jack, it takes me to the room where the DCMs are set up with, I don't remember what electronics, but they're an appropriate system for those speakers. So I hand him one of the LPs, puts it on the turntable, starts to play the record. And as soon as I heard the DCM time windows, what I was expecting, what my fantasy of what that sound would be was immediately crushed. It didn't sound like the way Peter XL described it. He just had this focused, clear, you know, hyper-resolved. It sounded like a nice speaker, but it didn't have magic. I didn't hear new information coming off those grooves that was unheard by me before I heard it through a time window. I don't, this may be when I still had, yeah, I still had my Bose 501 speaker. So, you know, my I should have had a, it should have been easily impressed, right? But the time windows. So we're playing, you know, a couple more of my records. And the thing that's interesting about this story is I have a feeling that this salesman has saw this happen many times before, that people would sit in that chair and have an expectation based on what the reviewers were saying about the time windows. And then when they heard it and the reality clashed with the fantasy of the speaker, uh, was party was over kind of thing. So, of course, he tried to, you know, say, well, let me play these other speakers, you know, but... The spell had been broken, so even if you played stuff that was way better than the time windows, I just wasn't in the mood. I wasn't, I couldn't accept hearing anything else. The time windows dream was over. The dream was over. Time windows were not going to be my salvation. I wasn't going to see the band in front of me. No, it sounded like a nice speaker. So I clearly, I did not buy those speakers. And I trusted Peter Axel a lot less after I heard that those speakers for real. The curious thing is that, you know, a contemporary of that speaker is the Spica TC50, more or less. That speaker is still, you know, regarded. It's the Tyca, the Tyca, the Spica TC50 is still a really good speaker, but I don't hear anybody talking about DCM time windows. Now, of course, I have a feeling some of you watching this video have them and love them, and maybe you can tell tell me why I went so desperately wrong in not buying those time windows in 1976. Anyway, but anyway, the Spikas, it's funny that the Spikas, and I heard the Spikas, 
And I don't remember why I didn't buy the spikers. Spikers were way more impressive when I heard them. They were closer to, the, to what I imagined that they would be. I think also reviewed by Peter XL in uh, The Audio Critic. Anyway, by 78, I met Andy Singer, and I bought a pair of Freed Model W speakers, which were basically stand mount transmission line speakers. And I loved those speakers, and I had those speakers for a few years, and that was sort of my entree into, let's say I call it, high-end audio in, the, in 1970 or so. That's it for today. But anyway, if you guys own Time Windows, uh, tell me about them. If you own Spica TC50s, tell me about those. Or some other speaker of that period that you know, is still, unlike the Time Windows, it's something that's still regarded as a great speaker from that time. That was not a very expensive speaker. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.